Not having the right NVIDIA control panel settings could completely destroy your performance. That's why I'm about to show you the best NVIDIA control panel settings for 2026 for maximum FPS in every single game. I'm gonna explain you what every single mode does in the NVIDIA control panel since I do know it can be a little bit overwhelming. Don't be worried guys, I got you covered. But you know what's just as important as getting really good performance? Having really low ping. And this is where Gia Booster comes in clutch. Gia Booster is your number one service which is gonna help you to reduce your ping and fix any sort of packet loss in games. Even your favorite pros like Zen are using it. All you get to do is try it out for absolutely free with the link in my video description guys. And once you get the tool installed, all you get to do is select the game which you try to play. No matter if it's Fortnite, Counter-Strike, Valorant, GR Booster got you covered. It supports all of your favorite games. And once you selected the game, it's gonna automatically pick the best DNS server in your near and even apply a packet loss protection service, which is guaranteedly gonna provide you with the least amount of delay and the smoothest gaming experience. They even have new integrated FPS boost features which you can try out directly over the application. So make sure to check it out for absolutely free with the link in the video description. So guys, and once we're now in the NVIDIA control panel, this is exactly how it should look like. And in the first place, you always want to go under adjust image settings with preview and use the advanced 3D image settings. Many people actually still do the same mistake. They want to set this here actually on quality, but as soon as you actually change something in the 3D settings themselves, it's always going to swap over here to the middle one. So therefore, don't even bother guys, just simply click on that, manage 3D settings. And now for the first one, we have image scaling. This one is actually an amazing feature. If let's say you have a 1080p monitor and you want to actually put your resolution to some something like 720p, you know, like normal HD, then you can use actually image scaling to still make it appear a little bit sharper and gain a ton of FPS. Pretty cool feature if you ask me, but you need the right game for it to actually be beneficial. Next up guys, we have ambient occlusion, which basically adds a soft shadow around objects. If there's like multiple ones in a game, looks pretty decent, but for competitive games, you actually want to have this completely turned off guys. This costs some FPS, so therefore definitely turned off. And dystrophic filtering. Now this one here kind of makes sure how detailed and nice textures look like. Of course, the higher you go on the scale, the better it's gonna look like. You know, it's basically pixel calculation. For me personally, I always keep this on application control because I changed that in Fortnite, CS, or whatever game I'm playing manually in there. But you could also keep it on off. I don't really care about how textures look like, especially not in competitive games, you know. You're anyways, like not getting super close. Unless you're maybe playing some story games, they could put it like all the way up if you want to. Now for anti-aliasing FXAA, this is a very old version of anti-aliasing and most games nowadays anyways have way better built-in anti-aliasing straight up stock so therefore I would not recommend you to actually use this one just simply keep it on off. What anti-aliasing does it blurs edges in games so that they don't appear as pixelated. I'm just gonna put a picture right now on screen so you know what I'm talking about. Actually the edges are not getting sharpened they're getting blurry so that you don't notice it. It looks better. Then anti-aliasing gamma correction only works if you're actually utilizing anti-aliasing. It doesn't matter by the way if you use the one here right now from the Nvidia control panel or the one from in-game and it kind of works together with how lightning reacts in terms of anti-aliasing. Looks pretty good and as an example in CS I actually do use uh, gamma correction itself because I use anti-aliasing on 4x so therefore definitely keep it on. Then for anti-aliasing mode of course we're going to keep it on application control. Then we have anti-aliasing transparency and this one is basically for fences or there are some objects in games sometimes we can look through but fences are the best example so that they look a little bit nicer. I don't really care about it so I keep it on off. Then background application maximum frame rate. Interesting feature let's say as an example now that you may be listening to Google Chrome you know like YouTube in the background. You can sort of like limit the FPS there and I've seen some people actually talking about that it does increase your performance in wall gaming if you do other tasks as well. Pretty interesting, you could try it out if you want to. For me personally, I keep it on off. Then CUDA GPUs, don't really have to worry about it unless you have multiple GPUs in your PC. For me, it's here right now just my RTX 4090. Then the system fallback policy, you're just gonna leave on driver default. Now for DSR factors, this is also some sort of like scaling method you would say. And what some people actually use this for as an example is that if you have like me right now here, a 1080p panel from Zoe here, your maximum resolution is 1920 times 1080 but you could actually use sort of like Nvidia to scale it up to something like 2560 times 1440. And actually, in fact, games do sometimes benefit from this, even though if you're locked on a 1080p screen, you can still have slight benefits from this. So you can try it out for yourself if you want to. And if there's the right game where it could actually help, this is a cool thing to do. Or if you're maybe trying to benchmark on, let's say like 4K, 2K, and you only have a 1080p monitor, but you want to upload a benchmark of like the latest GPU, you can try that out as well. Next up, we have the low latency mode, guys. And this one is basically the same thing as maximum pre-rendered frames. Usually if you keep this on off, you always have free pre-rendered frames in your game, which means the picture which you're looking at at the moment is actually not pretty up to date. If you put this on on, it's only one, which of course reduces the amount of frames drastically, giving you a lot less input delay. The thing now is this is the old method because this one is actually running through your driver, which is proven to be pretty CPU heavy. And nowadays most games have the NVIDIA reflex low latency mode like Fortnite, CS and all of them. So you rather want to activate 
by that one. But it doesn't really matter if you keep it on, on here because the in-game engine rendered version is always gonna override this one here. Maximum frame rate, kinda interesting. I mean, you could theoretically put it to something like 20, 30 FPS above your maximum refresh rate so that your PC doesn't produce additional heat which doesn't really deliver any benefits. Now, multi-frame sampled anti-aliasing MFAA sort of improves the quality of your anti-aliasing while being more hardware friendly but only works with MSAA which is another anti-aliasing mode. So for most of the time, I actually keep this on off since I'm actually applying the one straight up in the game, if I need anti-aliasing. Next up, we have OpenGL GDI compatibility, which sort of controls the behavior of OpenGL. Just simply keep it on auto. Also OpenGL render GPU, you just simply leave on auto. Power management mode, of course this one here, put always on preferred maximum performance. Pretty self-explanatory. Then the preferred refresh rate, always the highest available, guys. You don't want to miss out on the hertz of your monitor. Shader cache size. This one you actually always put to 10 gigs. This is sort of the sweet spot. Texture filtering and distroffing, sample optimization. This one you actually want to have on, on, which will actually improve the FPS in games. Texture filtering, LOD bias. This one only really matters if you're actually changing the level of detail, which could be useful for potato graphics, as an example. In Fortnite, most games don't need this, so just simply leave it on the normal one. Texture filtering quality, of course, very important, put this one here actually on high performance. Texture filtering trillionaire optimization as well on on, both of these here are gonna give you a lot better performance. Since they both help textures to basically load faster, they might be a little bit lower quality, but this will improve your FPS. Now for threaded optimization, you can just simply leave it on auto. The only games where you actually have to do it manually would be in like super old like source games or some stuff like that. Triple buffering on off, vertical sync actually on off guys, this is what I would recommend you, unless you're playing on anything lower than 100 hertz, like 60 or 75 hertz if you have screened hearing, so therefore they could maybe try it out. And all these virtual reality and Vulkan modes just simply on one, off and auto. And then you're already good to go and can apply all of these settings. Now next up we have change ECC state and this one actually only matters for systems where you do like very powerful calculations, something like AI or stuff like that. Other than that for gaming machines you always want to keep this off. Now for configure surround and physics I would actually highly recommend you if you have a somewhat capable GPU let this run over your GPU. For me it's RTX 4090 so I'm of course gonna select it. This is sort of like the calculation of physics in games and most of the time you're gonna get actually better performance if your GPU is the better part in your system and that's gonna be it like most of the time like if you have anything like a GTX 1070 1650 and above guys definitely utilize this now we're gonna go under change resolution real quick and always make sure that you go under PC select your native resolution and put it to the highest possible of your monitor and then as well adjust desktop size and position and if you're actually not using any sort of search resolution in games always put this one here on no scale guys that one is super important and that way you're gonna have the least amount of input delay guys and yeah those are the best nvidia control panel settings for gaming for 2026 and if you need some more optimization definitely check out these two videos right here on screen as well